Hola, ¿qué tal, mi gente? Byron González here to bring you another great SoCal Sound session. Thanks for pressing play. While we have you here, please subscribe so you don't miss the next great SoCal Sound session. So today in studio, I am very happy to welcome back. She's been here twice. Now this is her third time with her third album. I'm talking about Angelica Garcia, who just released Gemelo. Look how pretty this is. She's got a little, it's shiny background. Mm. It's her first album, all in Spanish, by the way. Aquí tenemos a Angelica García. ¿Cómo estás? Hi. Un placer de tenerte otra vez aquí. Gracias. It's good to be back. Good to see you again, Byron. Yeah. Last time you were here, Cha Cha Palace, and then before that was like the first album you ever released. It's yeah, a long. Babies. You've been ha you you've been on a long road. This Good. music career of yours. Whew. Yeah. You tell me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. um, I feel I feel even as as much as you've been here, I still feel like I don't know you as much as we could know you. So I have a few questions. Oh, okay, interesante. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a night owl or an early bird? Mm, it's, to it's totally situational. Situational? Mm -hmm. What if it, like you have a day off, you don't have to go in the studio, or you don't have to go on tour or anything? What do you like to do? Mm, it depends. I, am I having a mind day or a body day? Okay. If I'm having a mind day, then I usually stay up late and like I'll be writing or like listening to music or something or reading books. And if I'm having a body day, like I'm like, I feel like crap. I'll get up and I'll go do yoga or something. Or okay. Like, I'll try to be like, wake up, wake <laughs> up, wake up. Yeah. Okay. Very situational. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. And, and when you do wake up and start your day, do you like taking it with tea or coffee? Coffee. Coffee. Mm. All the way. Put it in an IV pack if you can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I need some right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, what? When you were growing up in your formative years or maybe just the earliest memory you have that you like had an album that you loved and you could not stop playing it. Um, well, there have been many of those. The earliest memory, like for real, for real, earliest? Yeah, for real, for real. Maybe Barney soundtrack or something. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Honestly, it was probably Faye. It was Faye. probably Tierna La Noche. Oh, interesting. By Faye. Yeah. Um, because that might have been, like, the first CD that I had with, like, a Walkman. Hmm. Like, and I remember the little moon. If you bought the CD, there was the moon on the CD. Oh, cool. And I thought it was so cool to, like, watch the moon Spin turning. Around. In it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, cool. That was a favorite one. My, I had a tío that was, like, super into techno music. Like, he'd be in the background, in the backyard, and my grandma's house, like, working out to techno music. And, like, that album is very, like, techno-y. So I was like, cool, this is, like, my tío Juan. It's awesome. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I can yeah. just imagine he's just like pumped the heck up. Exactly. Yeah. I'm going to listen to it. Faye? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Tier, um, uh, Tierna La Noche by Faye. I think it was out in like 1999. Cool. You guys want to listen? I'm going to go check it out after mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Um, how about like the first concert you ever attended? Um, That I remember? Yeah. That I remember. Actually, I think it was probably Britney Spears. No way. What yeah. album? Like, oh my gosh, it was the, it was the Slave for You tour <laughs> <laughs> at the Staples Center. Staples the Center. The Staples Center with my cousins and my half sisters and my siblings and. Damn, the whole gang went. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and it was that I was like just old enough that I was like, <laughs> Britney. I don't know if she's cool, <laughs> but then I was totally there, like <laughs> watching me, like, like I love <laughs> you this. know, I love so this. funny. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Britney Spears. What a time. What a time. Simpler times. In many ways, yeah. <laughs> um, what's what's like one of your favorite foods? I love dumplings. Dumplings is your thing? I love dumplings. Like dim sum spots, like mm -hmm. where you can go get all that kind. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Yeah. SGV has so much of that too. It's like so good. Um, I, like, I love dumplings and I actually, I really love sushi too. I love sushi, too. I'm a sushi girl. It says Asian food is, like, bomb. Honestly, it's pretty bomb. bomb. Yeah. I think it's, like, because that's, like, it's, like, not the natural um, pantry culturally, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, like, I'm, every time I go, I'm, like, 
oh, this is awesome. I can't make any of this at home. This is amazing. Surprise me. I'm down. Yeah. Like, like of go. course, we love our own food from our own culture. But like, yeah, when, yeah, yeah. like we have it every day. So we kind of take it for granted, I guess. So yeah. then that's why we gravitate. Well, to it's things. so funny to me to like go to a breakfast place and then people will get like eggs and beans and aguacate for like 20 bucks. And I'm like, this is, the, I can't, I feel like I can't do this. It's a $5 thing at home. Right, right, <laughs> right. And so I'm like, okay, at least I can't make dumplings. And if I tried to make it, it would take me like hours and I would, <laughs> and it would be so bad. So like I will let the abuelas cook that. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is one of your spirit am- animals? Do you have a spirit animal? <laughs> I love chihuahuas. Chihuahuas. Are the thing. <laughs> They're See, amazing. that's how much it makes her <laughs> giggle yes. just thinking about They're it. They're so cute. I love them. I have never had one. I've admired them from afar, but I I really relate to their anxiousness and their fury. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And they're just like happy. <laughs> Anxious, fury, and happy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Um, you're on tour a lot. You're like traveling all the time. What is an essential thing you need when you travel that you're like, if you forget it at home, it's going to be the worst trip ever. Like practical or like weirdo? Both. Let's do both. Okay, like practical, probably like headphones. If I don't bring a good pair of headphones, I'm like, this is the worst thing ever. Like, right. Yeah. You can't zone out. No. People and you need a good you. pair too. Like you need a really good pair because the budget ones don't do it. <laughs> um, like weirdo thing. Okay. So I I dance a lot in my show, right? So like, and I and I have to be like super energetic uh, for a lot of the tour, and I'm caught in a hard place because like, if I drink too much coffee or too much tea, then that actually messes up my voice. Mm. So I've been like researching like all these ways to have energy and whatever. Like if I'm um, and I left it last time, last tour, but I made like a little spice jar and I filled it with all these like crazy superfood powders. So it has like wheatgrass and ashwagandha, reishi ashwagandha. and moringa. It has like all the superfoods in powder form Whoa. that I got, I don't know, grocery outlet or something. Shout out. <laughs> and then I put it all in the spice jar. So like basically anytime I have a snack or something, I just like it's probably in my purse right now. I, it is in my purse right now, actually. That's like life force food. Nice, nice. Okay, last question to really get uh, to know Angelica Garcia. Uh, what's like a hidden talent or useless talent that you possess? Well, useless. Yeah, either one. Hidden or useless. Okay. Honest- Sometimes it's the same thing. <laughs> useless. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. They're useful. I'm a really good cook. I love to cook. That's my thing. And I love cooking for people because I love people and cooking for people. Um, Useless, I guess, like, I'm pretty good at, oh, my gosh, this is so funny. Um, Like, replacing words of songs in whatever situation I'm in. I don't know if that makes any sense. Okay. I can give an example. I can give Uh an Okay. So, like, I worked at this Cuban diner, and they're always, like, um, making empanadas but over there they call them empanadillas so an example of it was like they're like oh send the empanadas to table three and i was like mesa 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 que más aplaude la manda, la manda la empanadilla. <laughs> like like that i'm really good at i don't know why my brain like whatever situation i'm in i'll switch the lyrics to that's cool that's yeah. kind of cool talent Totally I can't useless. do that. It's like it's like switching back and forth from uh, word like yeah, languages. No, it's very useless, <laughs> but uh, I but guess it makes the day go by. It's it makes it fun. Yeah, yeah. it makes the people laugh a little. Cool. Um, thank you for letting us get to know you now. Yeah, we're that much deeper into who is Angelica Garcia. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you just played Color de Dolor. My first question on that one: Did you ever find out what that color is? I'm very curious because it okay. seems like you questioned it a lot. Yeah, I mean, I I don't think so. No? I think I think the final conclusion, personally, was that, you know, that's the mystery. What is it? You know, all all of our experiences as humans, they they're different colors of of joy and pain, and that's what makes our life exciting and and memorable and beautiful. Nice, that's great. And it's just like this album, like there's there's a lot of 
what I heard is a lot of self-discovery. Hmm. And especially because sonically, too, it's it's a whole new chapter for what is Angelica Garcia. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that adventure that you had from your previous album, Cha Cha Palace, into this one where it just seems like it's just the more like, not to say that the other one didn't have drive, but there's just like more emotion mm. or more, how do I say it? Like, oomph. Like a little more like turbulent or something? Yes, turbulent. Mm. I like that word. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, just by nature, like uh, the first demos of Gemelo started in 2019, like the very first one okay. was 2019. So it's just like right around when you released Cha Cha Palace. Yeah, that's when that's actually when I first started a demo for Color de Dolor. Oh, cool. Um, and it was just a baby, baby back then. But, but 2019, like everything shut down 2020, right? Like pretty early in the year. So by nature, like Camilo was a much, much more insular album. Like Cha Cha Palace was like, all these different studios, different friends, like people coming in and out, like me going to all these different people to mm. record. Gemelo, so much of it was like me alone in my room. And then um, Carlos Arevalo from Chicano Batman hit me up over DM because he like saw some interview that I did and he thought my music was cool. And oh, cool. Uh, yeah, we became like friends. And then when the pandemic hit, we were kind of like, Zooming and, and FaceTiming and he was teaching me about Ableton and stuff and he was being really cool. Like I was I was singing some on some stuff for him and Eduardo, but then like over that time it started to become clear to me that um I was like, Oh, I'm making a collection of songs, like it feels like it's gonna be an album and Carlos was like, Oh, that's awesome, Angelica, like here you should hit up this producer, you should hit up this person, call this person and um we had been friends for a while by that point and I was like Carlos you should just do it like like don't send me to, like I want to work with you and oh, he was like yeah. I've never produced an album before and I was like well you're kind of doing it right now so like I'd rather work with you so that was really cool that was an awesome experience Carlos like I mean obviously like Chicano Batman's music is like super like synthesizer heavy mm-hmm. and um, Carlos and I both shared a love of like Portishead and Radiohead and Timbaland and like Kanye West and Solange and all this stuff so it was a fun merge I feel like the record is like a fun merge of our personalities and yeah that's that's a lot of what you're hearing I think that's cool and a lot of that turbulence from just being shut in I'm sure yeah yeah yeah, a lot of introspection because you don't have the rest of the world to distract you so you have to face everything that you've been putting off pretty much wow wow when when was that point i know you said that some some along the way that you're like oh this is going to be a collection of work but like i don't know as an artist how do you figure that out versus like an ep an album like especially this one mm-hmm. i mean i just growing up i always loved albums and I think if I'm going to put in the time and the energy and the dedication to make a body of work, um, I'm more I'm personally more likely to focus on a record because I feel like that's that's enough songs to like give a like tell a full story. And um, yeah, and I write and I write a lot. So like I I had enough songs that I was working on that like I was starting to see a line, like a through line of all of them. And that's mm. that's a really exciting... It's really exciting when you have that realization. And you're like, oh, this one's connected to this one. Oh, this one's cool. connected to this. And um, yeah, it just became clear that a lot of the songs were about like uh, letting go and like personal responsibility, like <laughs> grief, um, beauty. Yeah, it, it was... I mean, it was very special. It's a very tender... Um, it's a very tender <laughs> record, <laughs> I think, but it, intense too, I guess. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, in some parts, it's got mm-hmm. it's ebbs and flows, right? Uh, talking about ebbs and flows, let's get flow into the next song that you're gonna perform in that cool little studio. Show us your your dance moves. Cumbia. Uh, cumbia. So what? Paloma? Juanita. Juanita. Ooh, I was yeah. Thinking, um, yeah. They both dancey though. They are both yeah, dancey. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's get into Juanita then, as suggested by Angelica. Juanita, 
right now. Stick around. <laughs> Juanita, that that is a fun song, and the music video is even more fun to look at because you're like playing two people, Juan uh -huh. and Juanita. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. Is that is that what it was? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it was really fun. Did you have much say into that video? Or was it your friend that just had like, this is the idea I have for this song? Well, um, my friend, her name is Sonia Malfa. She's uh, she's New Yorican. New Yorican. Uh, oh, Puerto Rican. New York. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. Cool. She's awesome. She's an awesome filmmaker, cinematographer. And um, ever since Cha Cha Palace, we had been wanting to work together. And uh, so she was like, I really want to make a video for you. And... That was totally her vision of me playing both roles. She was like, I see this. You're going to be Juan. And you're going to be Juanita. I'm like, okay, Sonia, <laughs> let's go. I'm down. And um, not going to lie, I wasn't I wasn't expecting, like, how psychologically difficult that was. Really? Yeah. Okay. It was. like because You had to put in your acting shoes, right? You're yeah, I guess. But I it was, like, a little strange because it's still, like, Angelica Garcia or whatever. But, like... It was really interesting to experience that, like, because, um, like, even the even the feminine costume or whatever didn't particularly feel like me either. Mm. So, yeah, it it actually felt a little easier to play Juan, if I'm being honest. <laughs> so that was interesting. It's it was, this it fluidity fun. in gender, right? It's just sometimes you just feel this way and this sometimes. Yeah, I felt way. like I almost energetically resonated more with that character or something. But but it was super fun and uh, it was cool to like most of the crew that were helping to make that video were Latinas too. So it was super cute. Oh, that's cute. awesome. Yeah, putting yeah. Latinas to work. <laughs> Let's go, Lise. Yeah, that's cute. <laughs> um, during the process of creating this album, you're going to studios, you're writing it. What would you say is your most memorable moment from like the creation of the album? Not like when you're listening to it, but like the process of it. I have a memory of um, Paloma that's really sweet. And uh, a lot of this was done, like the official audio and everything, a lot of it was done in Carlos's basement, like Ooh. his studio. But... Um, we also went to a studio in New York called the Diamond Mine. That's a cool um, name. You're yeah. Go, go in there to dig some diamonds. Okay. That's yeah. The idea yeah. Behind it. Um, who is it? The Leon Michaels. They have, um, they have that record label called Big Crown, but Carlos oh. is friends with them. Cool. And, um, I remember being in the, in the room with all the pianos. And like all the live instruments and drums. And Carlos invited Roberto, like a uh, Helado Negro, to come over. Oh, what? And all the guys were like sitting in the other room, and I was like gonna play piano for Paloma. And I was just trying some different things, like, but it was this old, pretty little piano. And um, I just started playing the like, trun, 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 trun. And I remember both Carlos and Roberto running and be like, that, you do that one. And both of like, them? Yeah, both they both ran in. And it, and it was very sweet because it, it was the last thing that we did that day. So, like, it was a really sweet moment with Carlos, too. Like, oh, thanks, Angelica, for having me. Like, it was, it was sweet. I was like, thank you, Carlos. Like, That's really cool to have both of them just be like, epiphany. That's Yeah, the one. yeah. Everybody just like, ran in from the other room and was like, you need to play that. And I was like. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a big difference I've seen in your performance from like when I first saw you when you were performing songs from Cha Cha Palace to this. It's yeah. it's huge. Um, when did you decide that dancing was going to be an element in your in your shows? Yeah, well, for many years I was just this like one woman show of looper and sampler as you saw and that was wonderful as a up and coming artist because it was super portable and I did so many tours like on a Greyhound bus and mm -hmm. like crashing Just, somebody's van yeah. yeah and um but the one thing about that is like I felt like it didn't work very well in big rooms especially because I was like doing mad scientist stuff so I, <laughs> I constantly like had my head down and I was like do, 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 do. and then I had a few people tell me like we feel like we're not really connecting with you because your mm. head is down the whole time and I was like oh dang you're right and and I don't know I just something 
I guess I had always been afraid or like self conscious about dancing in a show. Like I don't know if part of it is like being a woman in music and you feel like I had to prove that I can play these instruments and I can do all this stuff because I can do it. And yeah, it's a little bit of that too, right? A little yeah. bit, but then I finally just got to a point where I was like, I don't need to prove anything. <laughs> That's like, awesome. Like, I wrote the songs. I know that I did this. <laughs> I played in the studio. I know that I did this. And I actually want just to make a better show. Like, and I was like, well, I love dancing and moving. Like, I'm not, I'm not a, like, pro dancer, but a lot of how I write my music is I think about how it feels in the body. Mm. And I kind of had this little yeah. epiphany with Hemelo. Like, there's a lot of, like, mixtures of different types of rhythm. And I felt like it's... I had a lot of people, like, they were confused by it. <laughs> like, they were like, well, it's not reggaeton, and it's not salsa, and it's not pop. And I was like, okay, whatever. And I kind of had this epiphany, like, I should just show people how I dance to it so maybe they can see how they can dance They're to like, it. They're like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, and so that's kind of, like, it became a thing. And, and I've grown to, like, I, like, love it because it's a chance to be more theatrical and, like, perform a little more, too, and be more magical that way yeah. with the songs. I always thought you, of you as more, like, also a visual artist because you're... Mm, that's great. Like, the album for yeah. Cha Cha Palace was, it was all collage. Yeah. Which was super cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely very, like, visuals are a huge part of my creative process. Like, I, I feel like I know when a song is good or if I'm really into a song that I'm working on, I'll start to see in my head the video or like the artwork that goes with it. That's or, cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it is, it's nice. Like I'm, I'm super excited for the stages to get bigger and to get <laughs> to like play with the production of the show more. That's awesome. And some more visuals, some more lights yeah. in the mix. More drama. More drama. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I'm happy for that. Uh, and it, I, it feels like, well, just from, seeing you perform in there just you get you're like in this whole world you're in the Angelica Garcia the performer mindset you're like where the where the heck did Angelica Garcia the person go you, it's like cathartic isn't it like yeah at least that's how it looks like it looks like you're yeah healing in a lot of ways and like it feels awesome like you may Aww. that's how it looks you, it, Thank you. Like visually like you're just like having fun and you get lost in it yeah I, I think like I'm just trying to tell the story of the song. That's awesome. It's interpretive dancing. Ha! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Interpret it how you will. You, yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, Angelica, this was awesome for you to come back and come be, keep coming back. So I really hope we continue this tradition Yay. every time you have a new yeah, album. Yeah, I know. Oh, man. Like, what, what am I going to look like next time? I'm going to have, like... Pink hair or something. Yeah. Just kidding. More but. diva. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. This is going to get higher and higher on the no, echelon of stars. Just come with like really tall shoes. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows what the next one will be? And then next time, maybe you'll be at the Kia Forum or something. <laughs> Full visuals. Yeah. yeah. That, would, that would be really fun. That would be super fun. Well, I, I'm very happy that you keep making music because you had me at Chacha Palace. Mm. You continue to have me in Hemelo. And I'm excited to see, to hear what's coming up next. I know you already have some stuff in the kitchen. You're getting ready to do some things. And I know. It's just I, nonstop for you, huh? Yeah, we have, um, I have a, a couple U.S. states. Like, I'm playing in Wisconsin next week, New York next week. And then I go to U.K. for three weeks with the rock band Idols. Yeah. And then I'm doing a tour later this year with Nilofer Yanya in the oh, US. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and then the Black Pumas in Europe. And then I go wow. back to I go back with Idols, but we're going to Mexico. And so yeah, like I'm already like, oh, I got to start like already working on new stuff because I'm not going to have time. <laughs> and I, I just want to get whatever time I can, but but it's fun. It's like it's it's cool. I'm super glad like Hemelo is like the first body of work that I like actually wrote in Spanish, pretty much. Right. Except for Gemini, I guess. But um, that—that's the other thing I was thinking about. That 
you know, before I opened this thing up, there was a sleeve on it and I had album. It was like Angelica's first album fully in Spanish. And for me as a bilingual person, like I didn't even realize yeah, that. I'm just listening to the songs. Yeah. And I'm like, this is awesome. Like I didn't think twice to think that it was in Spanish or in English. But yeah, here in America, it's a huge deal. Well, yeah, you know? I, I think it was just like it. It was super. I'm super glad that I challenged myself to do it and it um because I grew up hearing Spanish my whole life and speaking it with my grandparents and stuff but like writing is a totally different oh, thing really? and like communicating at, at least for me personally like um, my Spanish wasn't at a great level y todavía like un poco, it's a, li- sí, a little chueco you know yeah. like <laughs> but <laughs> pero sabe que voy mejorando like it's just it just gets better and better and I feel more comfortable with it and like the new stuff I'm writing and like it's I'm excited it's all kind of vibing and flowing and bilingual and yeah it's just it's it's whatever it wants to be and right. that's great right yeah. whatever yeah. comes out of you whatever, whatever however it comes out you know and that's that's super exciting and so far like it's been pretty accepted like I was Playing in like France and in Germany, and there were people oh, wow. that didn't speak Spanish, but they learned the chorus of Juanita, or they were singing. Oh Paloma. yeah, you were saying some kids in Germany were like yeah, singing along to it. Yeah, it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful, and it just like kind of proves that like languages, um, music is a language of itself, like in and of itself. So. Yeah, you can. I I love listening to music in in Japanese and mm-hmm. French. Yeah. It's got a good beat. Like, I'm yeah. down with it. Great band, great artists, like, whatever. Yeah, it transcends everything. Yeah. So congratulations on that. Keep going. Thank you. Keep doing the work. You got a lot of accolades on this uh, album. Thank big, you. Big, big ups, especially for someone in Nuestra Cultura and everything. It's like, we love to see each other achieve yeah. greatness. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. Awesome, yeah. Hey, pues, muchas gracias otra vez por, Yay, gracias por taking tenerme. time. Yeah. And uh, good luck with your tours. It seems like you are, your calendar is packed. Thank you. I know. Catch me outside. Catch, me, outside. <laughs> Catch go, me outside. Come find me. She'll be in Mexico. Follow her on the Instagram so you don't miss a show. And again, we got to tell you, just go listen to it. Get the album. Look. Oh, yeah. It's in clear vinyl. Look how yes. cool this is. There it is. A little preview. Yeah. It might entice people to go get it. <laughs> <Mi hija>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, pues ahí estamos, Angélica, otra vez. No te puedo parar de agradecer. So thank you. And everybody, thank you. thank you for watching. Hope you catch the next one. And we're out.